First of all, thanks for uh, you know providing a platform for these type of conversations because I think it's important. Um, this is an interesting time uh, for a lot of us. Um, so I am the principal at Fall Hamilton Elementary School in Nashville. Um, I am the proud father of, of three. Um, I am also serving as a foster family um, and I'm very proud of that. Um, I have been a principal. This will be this is my fifth year at Fall Hamilton. We are a small. Uh, scrappy but mighty little school in Nashville. Uh, we have 325 kids. We are a title school. Um, I always tell people that doesn't describe our kids. That just describes um, where they get a lot of their support. Um, we are uh, an amazing little school who has been on the forefront of some innovative approaches around trauma-informed practices. Um, that's a little bit about the school. A little bit about me is um, I've learned that I I tend to thrive in the midst of um, chaos. I've always said, if there's a crisis, I'm going to be the one that's probably gonna end up hurt because I definitely run towards it. Even as a, a middle school and high school kid, I remember the feeling of being uncomfortable and it's really weird, but enjoying it. The uncomfortable setting of this feels uncomfortable, I feel like I'm growing. And I think what we know about us as humans is a lot of times, the, the times in which we grow the most are the hardest times that we experience. Whether it's the death of a loved one, whether it's a natural disaster like a tornado, whether it's a pandemic like this, these are the times in which we experience as a culture of people um, coming together and opportunities and understanding what can I do as an individual person or as a leader or as a school um, staff or teacher um, and so I, I tend to I tended to focus in that circle of control um, my district gave us and empowered us during that time with the tornado to go and serve in our community and some of our hardest hit so I wanted to model that for my staff and provide an opportunity for them to do the same thing um, but I think what what I focused on as a leader with my school during all of this time is that circle of control um, because when we start getting outside of that circle and we start trying to navigate and wrap our heads around things that are completely out of our control is where we can become um, overwhelmed, depressed, mm -hmm. uh, concerned, stressed. Um, and those aren't spaces in which we, as, as a school leader, I want to be in for my staff. Mm -hmm. I think we can name it. I think we can connect to it. I think we can say this is where it is, but still focusing on that circle of control is really important and mm -hmm. even with a staff meeting um, that we're even doing virtually we start with check-ins where mm -hmm. are you um, where are you as a not as a teacher but where are you as a person uh, as a parent uh, i can tell you as a parent of three this has been really difficult um, mm -hmm. to try to get materials from three different teachers and try to figure out times and also continue to support my staff um, so just checking in but I think the power comes in um, and it really is grounded in those trauma informed practices mm -hmm. um, and looking at the six characteristics that come out of Washington state. The first one is always empower and never disempower. Mm -hmm. And I think the point of that is we have to empower our staffs, our families, our kids um, and understanding that we there's support and it looks so many different ways. And it is a concern when we're in a, a when my school has a large population of um, of uh, underserved families. It's a concern, and it does keep us up at night. But we we again focus on that circle of control. Um, yeah. How can we provide food? How have we provided support from the tornado until now? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very proud to be in a district that does that as well. Well, I think there's always opportunity in any type of adversity. Uh, we call it resilience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what we know is that, um, especially in the trauma world, that people can come through trauma being stronger. People can come out of post-traumatic strength. It's it's a it's it's a build if the support system is there. And so what we've what I've noticed with my staff is we uh, are not focusing on things that are out of our control. And what we know about trust is in, in the book Trust Matters, which is one of my favorite books. Um, when you're talking about um, an event or something 
an instability, there can be two ways that that can affect people. It can be mistrust or it can increase trust. And we're trying to use this time as um, a platform and an opportunity to connect staff because we're all feeling the same way. Um, and so we've done that. Um, we're having virtual staff meetings where it's really just about connection. I did um, a leadership team today and we are redeveloping who Fall Hamilton is. And I think mm. you really know who you are when you're in the state of chaos mm. or, or around you is chaos. I don't feel like we're in chaos. I feel like we're actually quite stable um, in our connectedness, which is creating an excitement for me because um, I'm feeling a connectedness in my staff that maybe we didn't feel before. When we were mm -hmm. praying for snow days, we were praying mm -hmm. for time off. <laughs> and now it's like, are we gonna go back? We wanna go back and we wanna see our kids and we wanna, um, so that's important. And we're using this as a platform to be quite honest to looking into next year. Mm -hmm. And we may go back, we don't know, but it's an opportunity for us to take time together, feel connected, mm -hmm. use it to, to envision ourselves as a better space and a better mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. um, and even with us, we're getting to our core principles of a school mm -hmm. of who we are and mm -hmm. I think those are things that should happen that we don't necessarily have time you can't help but be connected because mm -hmm. you're working through something that is greater than you bigger than you um, more important than you which was that person's livelihood and life that you're trying to support that was mm -hmm. one second um, being able to talk to families in a in a place of trust during mm -hmm during this chaotic time and to hear them share with you their stories or their situations or their current status in a sincere way where they trust me enough to be able to say, Portel, what you didn't know before is I lost my job right before this happened mm -hmm. and it's been hard and, or, you know, I'm scared or we don't have food or those conversations to me are so powerful. Um, and very important that need need to be um, had. But again, it goes back to trust. And then when you talk about connecting with every family, I'm, I'm almost, I'm over halfway through, it's been a week. Um, and it's, I'm gonna do it at the beginning of every school year. Mm. Um, if, it, if I have to take the first week before school tar starts and ha hack out two hours, um, the, kids, the kids are genuinely excited. And I love when I call a parent and they go, so and so, your principal's on the phone, mm -hmm. and the kids gets on. The kid gets on, and they're genuinely excited, and it brings it. It, it motivated me. It, it, mm -hmm. it lifted me up as much as it did our kids, and I think that's important. So, what it all comes down to is what what impacts is the connection, mm -hmm. is the relationships and the connection, and that's what we are in. We're in the human business. Yeah, um, yeah, we're in the connection business and any opportunity that we can have right now to connect to our families. We may not be able to leave our homes. We may, and I'll tell my families, if there's anything I can do, I will certainly go out of my way to do it within the constraints that we've been given.